This is a short vlog from Ian Ross, who is a member of uh, Altrium Gaming Club, uh, showing off some of the spectacular terrain that he's been working on. Thank you, Ian. Hello, folks. Uh, Andy suggested that I might want to do a bit of content for Weight of Fire. Um, so I thought I would, and I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about two games that I'm really excited to play when this virus nonsense is finished. One is Twisted um, by Demented Games, which is a steampunk skirmish game. Um, it, awesome miniatures, um, really nice background, some good card play in the mechanics in there. Really excited by that. And the other one is Malifaux 3rd Edition. Um, I've looked at Malifaux sort of sideways quite a few times in the past, never really done anything with it. And I thought in lockdown, um, I'd give it a go. Played a couple of games in it online with a couple of people from the club, Charles and Billy, uh, and it's great. So um, I did what I normally do in these situations where I get excited by new games and thought first thing to do, obviously, is to build a table. Uh, because they both are on a 3x3, three three, they're both a bit sort of weird and cyberpunky. I thought, let's do it. And here it is. Uh, I finished this this morning. Uh, I've gone for a bit of a... Um, an abandoned weird village in a swamp sort of thing and what I usually do when I make a table is build everything and then cover it all in flock and what you end up with after a year or so is uh, boxes that have just got loads and loads of sawdust flock in the bottom of them so I thought I'd try something different this time and see if I could do it almost all with paint um, and the result is this table with all the lurid green slime all over it which I really like um, the, the idea isn't mine, it was stolen from um, the studio paint job of that building right there, um, which is on the Weird Miniatures site, where the guy who painted that had, had used this technique to put slime on. I'm not sure how he did it, so I tried to replicate it, uh, and I think it's worked reasonably well. So there's the table, a few shots of it. Um, the, the buildings themselves are all from Weird, um, which are the guys that make Malifaux and um the trees are gw they're i can't remember what they're called they're whatever trees are from games workshop these days um and the rest is made out of uh foam card uh coffee stirrers and um stuff like that and the mat is a deep cut studios swamp mat so quite pleased with how that turned out it's all very well having a shiny table, but if we're going to play the game, we need some minis to use on it. Um, so I'm going to paint up two teams. That's next in my painting queue, which is what's going to form the basis of this lo uh, V-log, whatever you call them. Um, the first one is for Malifaux, and it's going to be um, from the Ten Thunders faction, which is the icon that you can see on your screen at the moment. And then if we flip to the list... These are the models that I'm going to be painting for this team. Uh, Malifaux um, doesn't just use factions, it also uses what's called keywords, and that's determined by, the keywords determined by the leader that you're going to use. So you can see at the top of the screen there, my leader is going to be Misaki Katanaka, um, and she is uh, quite fighty, but also very stealthy. Um, she has at the top there with a Shang, who's a, um, a familiar, and then, all the other troops and their upgrades are in the hires section below. So there's also a couple of other um, models that I'll need to paint, which are summonings. So I think I'm going to be painting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, uh, ten or eleven models for this team initially. So um, I'll show you what they look like at the moment, which is in a box. So that was the list. Uh, and here are the models. So, as I said, um, in Malifaux, there are there are two things. There are the faction that you're playing, and then there's the the master. Um, and the master has a keyword associated with them. So, this is Misaki. This is her here. She's uh, the Oyabun's daughter. Um, she is part of the Ten Thunders faction. That's a faction symbol there, but she's part of the Last Blossom keyword. Um, and this is her core box, and I'll be using everything from this core box. I'll show you what's in it. 
we've got Misaki herself, which is a pretty cool model, has to be said. A great big choppy thing, can't remember what it's called, no idea. Uh, Shang, which is a sort of fire elemental thing. Every master in Manifo has a, a totem, which I guess is something like a familiar or, or something of that nature. We've got a Toto, who's a bit of a beat stick. Um, he's a he's a really fighty guy uh, with a big Tetsubo, big club. And then these three fellas at the bottom are the Torokage. I don't I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right. But they are essentially ninjas. And what they do is they are very stealthy, difficult to see, and they run around the board getting stuff done to achieve the, the, the mission objectives, really. And they're, they're very, very good at that. Um, Misaki herself is also very sneaky. She can disappear at the start of a turn and then pop up essentially anywhere within eight inches where, of she, where she disappeared when she activates later in the turn. So um, this whole list really is about stealth and keeping your opponent on their toes. So we're using all of those. We're also using this box, which is the Karmic Debt box. Um, and both of the next boxes I'm showing you um, are Ten Thunders Faction, but also they don't have the same keyword, um, but they're called versatile models. So you can use anything that's versatile um, with any of the masters in the Ten Thunders Faction. So you don't have to use the Last Blossom keyword for this. You can use these guys with any of the other Ten Thunders masters as well. Um, and it's this lady that I'm really interested in, Minako Ray. She's super fighty, pretty quick, um, and has crazy abilities to do with karma. Um, and she can also summon stuff in. And the other three models in this box are things that she can summon in. These guys are probably what gets used most. They're called Katashiro. And they're, I guess they're almost like um, paper golems or paper demons. They very light they, they have an ability where they blow about on the wind at the start of their activation which means they get this this big unimp uh, unhindered move at the start of a turn um and they're quite fighty so she can summon those guys in and if she's lucky she gets to summon the one yudo which is basically a great big demon fire man head inside a a, a burning cartwheel which is um bit weird but there you go um and he does all sorts of things like set your opponents on fire as you might expect there he is on the front and lastly i'm going to use one of the models from this box again it's a versatile box so you could use it with any of the um 10 thunders masters uh, but they're versatile and i'm going to use uh, this guy fahatsu Partially because he is a preposterously silly model and I love it. Um, and partially because he is super shooty. So he's another sort of great big grunt. And I'm hoping that him um, is going to provide some serious covering fire for um, the sneakiness of the other people in this, uh, in this, this group. This might be a terrible list, I've no idea. Um, I, I've just started playing it actually uh, in a vassal game with Charles, but we've only played one turn, so I don't know how it's going to turn out. So that's what I'm painting up next. Um, and got to build them first though. So yeah, that's what I've been doing this week. I've finished the table, primed, uh, got myself a list, and I'm going to start painting that this week. So tune back in next week to see how far i've got see you later folks